Hello and welcome back to the Tech Blackboard. I hope you all are doing fine on this Monday and are ready to start the week with learning Azure and prepare for AZ 900 exam. In the last part, we have been focusing on the questions based on Azure security. It is such an important topic and many new questions are coming from this section. So let's continue with the questions that revolve around Azure security one area which is not just important from the exam perspective but also very important for all of those who are looking forward to professionally work on microsoft azure and of course my friends towards the end of this video a free pdf file is waiting for you with all the questions and the answers for both part 19 and part 20. so let's start the week with preparations for your upcoming az 900 exam So here comes the first question for today. Question number 361. It says which of these options helps you most easily disable an account when an employee leaves your company? Your options are enforce multi-factor authentication also known as MFA. The second option is monitor sign-on attempts and the last option is use single sign-on. And the correct answer for this question is use single sign-on. And this is because my friends single sign on centralizes your user identity so you can disable an inactive account in a single step. And friends most of the companies these days even the one you're working in use single sign on to centralize the administration of user identity both enablement or activation of user identity and the disablement of the inactive accounts both can be achieved by single sign on. And now comes question number 362. It says which of the following items would be a good use of resource lock? Your options are an express route circuit with connectivity back to your own premises network. The second option is a non-production virtual machine used to test occasional application builds. And the last option is a storage account used to temporarily store images processed in a development environment. And the correct answer for this question is option A, an express route circuit with the connectivity back to your own premises network. And why do you think it's a correct answer? Because the other two options are talking about non-production virtual machine, which is not that business critical. And the last option is talking about temporarily stored images processed in a development environment. Of course, this is also not a business critical application because this also is a development environment. Only the first option is talking about production environment and that's why it's a good idea to safeguard your production connectivity with resource lock. I hope you understood why we have chosen option A. In case you have still any doubts, do let me know in the comment section. And now comes question number 363. It says which of the following approaches would be the most efficient way to ensure a naming convention was followed across your subscription. Your options are send out an email with the details of your naming conventions and hope it was followed. I really hope that people are reading the mails so carefully. Anyways, let's move on to the next option. It says create a policy with your naming requirements and assign it to the scope of your subscription. And the last one is give all the other users except yourself read only access to the subscription have all requests to create resources sent to you so that you can review the names being assigned to the resources and then create them and the correct answer to fulfill this business need is option b create a policy with your naming requirements and assign it to the scope of your subscription and here comes question number 364. It says, what is Azure Information Protection? Now friends, I know the options are a bit lengthy, but I have to read it for you. So please bear with me. The first option says that AIP is a cloud-based solution that helps organizations classify and protect its documents and emails by applying labels. Now labels can be applied automatically by administrators who define rules and conditions and also manually by users and you can also apply labels with a combination of both. Now the second option says that AIP is a cloud based security solution that identifies, detects and helps you investigate advanced threats, compromise identities and malicious insider actions directed at your organization. 
The last option is AIP is a monitoring service that provides threat protection across all your service both in Azure and on premises. And the correct answer for this question is option A. Okay, so friends, before we proceed, I have a small request to make. I see that more than 75% of the people who watch my video have not subscribed to the channel. So in case you find any value in my content, please consider subscribing to the channel. It doesn't cost you anything, but it really motivates me to create the quality content and keep all the content free for you. Coming back to our questions, here comes question number 365. It says that your Azure environment contains multiple Azure virtual machines. You need to ensure that a virtual machine named VM1 is accessible from the internet over HTTP. What are the two possible solutions? Your options are modify an Azure traffic manager profile. Second one is modify a network security group and then we have modify a DDoS protection plan and lastly we have modify an Azure firewall. And the correct answer for this question is option B modify a network security group and option D modify an Azure firewall. And here comes question number 366. It says this question requires you to evaluate the underlying text to determine if it's correct. Here you can see that we have underlying text in this statement. Let's read this statement. It says one of the benefits of Azure SQL data warehouse is that high availability is built into the platform. And now what you need to do is review the underlying text. If it makes the statement correct, then in that case, you have to choose no change needed, which is the very first option given here. Otherwise, you have to choose from other three options given here, which are automatic scaling, data compression and versioning so that you can make this statement correct. And the correct answer for this question is no change needed because high availability is definitely built into the Azure SQL data warehouse. And here comes question number 367, exactly the same pattern as we saw in the previous question. Let's read this statement. It says Azure SQL set enables you to scale to thousands of virtual machines for high performance computing and large scale parallel jobs. And once again, you have to review this underlying text. If it is correct, then you have to choose no change needed. Otherwise, you have to pick between these three options, which are automatic scaling, Azure batch. And the last one is an availability zone. And the correct answer for this question is option C Azure batch. So it's Azure batch that enables you to scale to thousands of virtual machines for high performance computing and large scale parallel jobs. And now comes question number 368. It says which two types of customers are eligible to use Azure government to develop a cloud solution. Each correct answer presents a complete solution and your options are a Canadian government contractor the second option is a European government contractor and then we have United States government entity. The fourth option is a United States government contractor and the last one is a European government entity. And the correct answer for this question is option C and option D. And once again, let me remind you whenever Azure government is in question, it always relate to the United States government entities or the contractor. And now comes question number 369. It says you plan to create an Azure virtual machine and you need to identify which storage service must be used to store the unmanaged data disk of the virtual machine. Your options are containers, file shares, tables or queues. And the correct answer, my friends, is option A, containers. So basically, my friends, Azure containers are the backbone of virtual disk platforms for Azure infrastructure as a service. And please note, my friends, both Azure operating system and data disk are implemented as virtual disk where the data is durably persisted in the Azure storage platform and then delivered to the virtual machine for maximum performance. Also, friends, in the real AZ900 exam, you may be presented with an image like this. In comparison to the options that I have listed here, so both are same. You can see that I have listed or presented in an option like format, whereas in the real exam, you may be presented in this image format. But now that you know the correct answer, it doesn't matter which format the question comes in. And here comes question number 370. It says authorization to access Azure resources can be provided only to Azure Active Directory users. Yes or no? And the correct answer for this question is no. 
and this is because authorization to access Azure resources can be provided by other identity providers by using federation. A commonly used example of this is to federate your on-premises Active Directory environment with Azure AD and use this federation for authentication and authorization. And friends, if you remember, in the last part also, we talked about authorization and the authentication. And I promise you that I will tell you the difference when to use Azure AD and when to use Azure RBAC. So here it comes. Azure AD is responsible for authentication. On the other hand, Azure RBAC is responsible for authorization. And now comes question number 371. It says to answer, drag the appropriate benefit from the column on the left to its description on the right. Each benefit may be used once, more than once or not at all. Now let's check out what are we given with. So here we have Azure services such as Azure AD, RBAC and conditional access. And in the answer area, we are given with one liner definitions for each of these Azure service. And of course, we have to match all these services to these one liner definitions. So the first definition given is an if then statement of assignments and access controls. And most definitely, this is none other than conditional access. Then we are given with responsible for authentication. I just told you whenever it's authentication, always go for Azure AD. And the last one is responsible for authorization. And of course, this is Azure RPAC. And now comes question number 372. It says identities stored in Azure Active Directory, third party cloud services and on premises Active Directory can be used to access Azure resources. Yes or no. And this time, my friends, the correct answer is yes. Coming up now is question number 373. It says Azure has built in authentication and authorization services that provides secure access to Azure resources. Yes or no. And of course, this is a correct statement. And now comes question number 374. It says Azure government is operated by Microsoft. Yes or no. And this most definitely is a correct statement. And now comes question number 375 related question. So Azure government is designed for what? And your options are any government worldwide, US government or UK government. And the correct answer for this question is option B, US government. So once again, I would like to reinforce this concept whenever it's Azure government, it is always, always related to US government. And to drill this concept even deeper in your mind, here comes question number 376. It says Azure government is available only to US government agencies and their partners. Yes or no? And most definitely this is a correct statement. And now let's move the focus from Azure government or Azure US to Azure China. So here comes question number 377. It says Azure China is operated by Microsoft. Yes or no? And this time, my friends, be very careful. Azure China is not operated by Microsoft. And that's why no is the correct option. And I'm pretty sure that you are interested to know who actually operates Azure China. So here comes question number 378. It says Azure China is operated by 21 via net. Yes or no? And of course, you guessed it right. This is a correct statement. And here comes question number 379. It says Microsoft Azure services operated by 21 via net are a standalone instance separating from Azure global services. Yes or no? And this, my friends, is a correct statement. And let's take one more final question on Azure China. Here comes question number 380. It says the service availability in Azure China is not identical to the global Azure. Yes or no. And this is a correct statement. And friends, if you want to understand more on Azure China or how Microsoft Azure collaborates with 21 via net and operate Microsoft Azure China, this is the documentation. Here you can read very clearly. It says Microsoft Azure operated by 21 via net, also popularly known as Azure China, is a physically separated instance of cloud services located in China. And further, it tells you that it's independently operated and transacted by Shanghai Blue Cloud Technology Corporations Limited, which is also called 21 via net, a wholly owned subsidiary of Beijing 21 via net broadband data center corporations limited. All the other details on Azure China is given on this documentation. Read it. There are quite some questions from Azure China in AZ900 exam. 
And now my friends, in case you're looking for the PDF with all the questions from part 19 and part 20, you have to tell me the correct answers for the question number 342, 352 and 360, which are from the part 19. And then you have to tell me the correct answers for the question number 362, 369 and 375, which we took in this part 20. And you can send in your answers in the comment section below or email us at connectors at the rate the techblackboard.com. And that was all for today, my friends. In case you have gained some value from this video, please like the video that help us grow and all our new learners today. Please do subscribe to the channel and also select that all option so that you get timely notifications of all our upcoming videos. And of course, you can help your friends by sharing our videos on your social media platform. And I will see you in the next video. Till then, stay fit, keep learning and thanks for watching. If this video has added any value in your learning, a like and subscribe is highly appreciated. Share this video in your family and friends to spread and expand their learning. Your comments and feedback give me a chance to interact with you and I look forward for them. We will meet again in our next video. Till then, stay fit, keep learning and thanks for watching.